Hey guys, I'm just going to do a quick video on this car. I removed and reinstalled a, a remanufactured engine. This is a 2013 Buick LaCrosse with the 2.4 liter four cylinder and what they call the E assist. It's like a light hybrid vehicle. Um, so, first hybrid engine change I've ever done. First um, and most important thing is to come back in here. This little connector position assurance clip, as they call it, a CPA comes out just pops out like maybe an eighth of an inch and then allows this um mechanism to slide to the right um and then there's a little disconnect switch here which is this guy um that you basically just pull it over and it disconnects the power from the cables and then i checked these terminals between every one of them to make sure the book says that there's less than three volts there was no voltage because it was disconnected i zip tied it open um, but yeah, in the back seat here is where you get to that. <clears throat> so you disconnect that and then just real fast. Um, the intake I pulled off from over here, pulled off all my coils, pulled the battery, um, unbolted this cable. The rest of this can stay in. Battery goes out. Uh, tray comes out with the computer on it to get that out of the way. Um, then these three bolts um, hold this cover on. It, attaches the wires three phase wires to the generator um here and then there's also a couple coolant hoses to the generator so those got to come out drain your coolant that's probably the, the biggest pain in the butt is just having coolant everywhere there is a petcock on the lower left side of the radiator that works pretty good for draining some of the fluid but um yeah a 15 millimeter bolt there's two 15 millimeter bolts underneath this which are bolting to the bracket that goes to the block. Um, I unbolted the AC pump and just slid it back, left it on, on the car, so I didn't have to uncharge any hoses, any AC. Um, take off the cover and your little foam cover for your high pressure fuel pump, I took that out. Honestly, I took a whole lot of stuff off in the car because I was getting a long block, I had to swap everything over anyway. Um, it's not really that bad to take off most of the stuff. Once you get one thing out of the way, you get a little more access. The intake manifold I took off. The exhaust manifold I left on, but I unbolted the converter. I'll slide underneath the car and talk about that for a second. Um, I also pulled this engine from the top with a hoist because I really prefer not to disconnect struts and subframe bolts and all that kind of junk and then worry about alignment later. If you pull it out the top, it fits. You have to remove the crankshaft pulley. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. There is a special tool to compress this spring for the uh, drive belt tensioner. It's a big old pain in the butt. What I ended up doing was basically um, lifting the engine, unbolted the motor mount, put a block in between the jack and the oil pan, lifted it up a ways, and then with a big with this mount out of the way, uh, you can get a big pry bar in here and pry on the 19 millimeter boss the thing just strips off because it's aluminum if you try to like put a socket on it and turn it it's not made strong enough there is a little um this little 10 millimeter bolt has a little bracket on it that keeps the tensioner from being able to move up which is the direction you need for the belt to loosen and this tensioner assembly this is the pivot bolt in the middle uh right there and then this back here is a 15 millimeter head that is another tensioner that gives you a little more slack so you can get a wrench in there and pull that towards the front of the car um, from the top side that loosens that up and then what I ended up doing <clears throat> was with the pry bar prying on that big old thing and getting the spring to compress some it's kind of just it doesn't seem like it's moving you kind of just have to hold pressure there for a little bit because I'm pretty sure that's a hydraulic um, slash spring tensioner so the hydraulic causes it to move really slow which is a good thing it just doesn't look like it's doing anything when you're prying on it um, but yeah, so I, I loosened the pivot bolt up in the middle, and then I pried up on that little guy, got the belt off, and then I unbolted this spring, got that out of the way, um, because in order to get the tensioner bracket off, I think you had to have that off. Tensioner bracket <clears throat> fits through here. Um, I also, well, behind this tensioner here is where the two bolts are for the bottom of the generator. And then underneath, I unplugged, obviously, all my O2 sensors. Three bolts on the pipe here. I just let this pipe hang down. Uh, there's two nuts. Well, these are actually all nuts. 
and there's two nuts on, um, what would that be, the bottom of the converter to this bracket, and then there's two 15 millimeters here, and one over here, um, that you can get to with, like, a right extension, and a small extension in a socket, or a deep well in a ratchet, um, you gotta have that off the block so you can lift the engine up, and then this just fell out on me, um, once I, I had all this unbolted, and then I unbolted the, the three converter bolts on top and didn't really think about it and the thing just dropped and hit the ground didn't damage it but it's not really what i would like to do with a converter kind of an expensive item um had to unbolt the jack shaft mount from the block too and then obviously your bell housing bolts and your oil pans uh bolts your starter um but yeah once you get all that stuff off then you know i leave a, i leave a couple bell housing bolts in get a chain um hooked up I used a, a heavy duty chain with like a M8 by, I think it's 1.25, whatever the threads are here. I bolted in here, chain up and around, and <clears throat> over to uh, another bolt hole on this side. Um, it's another M8 by 1.25. So I figured two M8 bolts for the weight of this engine was enough. Uh, but yeah, so I was able to get her out, put the new one in. This is going back together now. Um, po point of this video is just to say, hey, it can come out the top. Um, and I guess pointing out a few hard, uh, frustrating things. Getting that belt back on, very frustrating. Also, getting this crankshaft pulley back on, you have to have it in just the right spot. It's kind of like jack the engine up, move it a little bit, put a ratchet strap on it, pull it back this way. I did a couple things. Because this guy gets in the way, and I didn't really want to take it off. So I was able to get the crank pulley out just fine, and then didn't really think about it. And then on the way back in, it was a little bit harder because I kept knocking stuff and getting dirt on the seal surface. So I had to pull it back out, wipe it off, put a little more oil back on, put it back in, finally figure out where it went. But anyway, all said and done. Um, it's like the first time is always a pain. I'm like, what did I get myself into? Why did I say I would do this job? But then after you do it, it's like, oh, okay, well, a couple of these things are really frustrating. Like getting that belt back on, I had to have my wife come out and hold the one wrench and push the belt on while I was prying on that little boss, 19 millimeter boss thing. But I mean, I got it back on and, you know, once you do it, then you're like, oh, okay, I could do this again. So I'm about to fill antifreeze, um, put some oil in here, crank it over for a while before starting it just to make sure I'm primed up. And then uh, we'll put power to everything for real and let it go. So again, it's 2013 Buick LaCrosse 2.4 with a hybrid. Um, not a terrible job. You can lift it up with a, a cherry picker engine hoist and take it out the top and uh, save yourself from having to replace subframe bolts, get an alignment, Futs with all that stuff down there. Didn't have to break any ball joints. Didn't have to take any axles out. I like that. So thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully this helps you guys. Um, covered a bit quick. Not super. I'm not walking you through how to do it. But if you're thinking about doing this, you probably know some stuff. And I think you can probably figure it out. Just make sure you're playing safe with the electrical stuff. Don't electrocute yourself. Shut it off. Don't touch anything that could electrocute you before you know that it doesn't have any voltage. Good luck.